All right. Hi, everybody. And here we are. Another great show. I'm very excited to be with you. Uh, You know, I love doing this program for a lot of good reasons. Uh, It's a personal way to communicate with you one-on-one. We even have a camera in the studio here, which is great. Uh, Makes me feel like I'm on television, and uh, I'm certainly comfortable with that idea. But it's nice to be on the radio. There's something about radio that's very uh, intimate. It's just, you know, listening to a person's voice and pausing enough to be able to sort of think and, and have the other person think and make it natural. I like that. It's like having a nice conversation with someone. And that's what I enjoy doing. And this is what we're all about. Today, I've got a great show. Uh, we're going to talk about how to reset your life and become unbreakable. Now, I'm using that word for a reason uh, because it's the title of a book, number one Amazon bestseller, written by Carl Romain. And it's all about the secret of developing an indomitable spirit. Don't you like that? I'm very excited about it because it has a lot to do with what I love, and that's truth and purpose, choices, accountability, action, and a lot more. So let's get right to it. I'm holding the book in my hand. Carl Romain, welcome to the show. How are you, my good friend? Thank you for having me on, Ernie. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. I'm holding the book in front of me, and and you just heard me in the introduction. I was talking about, as it says on the cover, the secret to developing an indomitable spirit. That in itself is enough to get me excited. Tell me about that. Why did you choose these words, Carl? Well, you know, I've been going through a lot in my life. Mm. Uh, When I was a young person and I started training in martial arts, my goal was to be a world champion by age 22. I actually wrote that in my high school yearbook. Wow. And I started training, competing, got ranked in the top 25, and then had a horrific car accident, was told that I'd never be able to go back to my sport. Wow. I spent a year in a neck brace, going to tournaments, watching other people win, and finally just made a decision to make a comeback. And to make a long story short, by age 22, I represented the United States team in international competition and Amazing. made my dream come true. Wow. And so- uh, from that point on, I told people that my passion led me to my purpose, which really did inspire people to live a life of their dreams. So you have a, a real personal connection to this, which, which I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. It's not like, you know, it's okay if you write a book about a subject that you have a lot of interest in, but this is so personal for you. You really overcame something and went on to succeed. So you've got some personal feelings uh, and ideas, and there's a lot in your book, by the way. You're talking about, you know, ways to do it, and it's implementing what you call six principles to reset your life. I want to go through that, okay? What what really important. One of the first ones you have listed here is truth. Talk about that, Carl. You know, the, the big question about truth is, are you really living your authentic life? Hmm. You know, as a uh, coach, I get people who talk to me sometimes, and they're older, and they made choices and decisions based on what other people wanted for them. Oh, yeah, and sure. They find, <laughs> and they find that, you know, suddenly I'm 40, I'm 50 years old, I've got all this responsibility, I don't mm. want to blow up my life, <laughs> but I'm unhappy. You yeah. Know, I'm not living the life I feel I should have lived. So and, you got to be you know, truthful with yourself, yeah, right? Look in that truthful, mirror and say, who, yeah, who am I? What do I really want? That's what you're saying, right? What do you really want? Yeah. And is your vision for your life really aligned with the way you're currently living? Mm. Boy, that that's heavy stuff. And, and that, that means that... When someone is hearing that or reading it and thinking about doing it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of courage to do that, doesn't it? Extremely. A lot of courage. You need to gather support from the right people. You need to have a plan in place of how you're going to do it. You need to know what the obstacles are and Mm -hmm. how you'll overcome those obstacles in advance. And I highly recommend working with a coach, a third party, somebody who's kind of outside of the picture versus yeah. somebody who's like a part of your daily life. Mm-hmm. But having the support of the people who are part of your daily life is critically important. You know, Carl, I, I think that's a very good point because there is so much we can do on our own and we need mm-hmm. that inner strength. But I'm a firm believer, like you just said, of having other people uh, being surrounded by at least one, maybe two people that really support you and give you that little extra push and they can hear what you're really talking about and what you mean. You know, every major accomplishment I've had in my life was because I had a mentor. Mm. You know, I, I was working on this book for almost 10 years. Yeah. And uh, when my best friend passes away. And it inspired me to continue to work on it because my mentor said, hey, this is part of your healing process. Mm-hmm. 
And so in the book, there's a whole chapter dedicated to her and, and talk about her life and our relationship. Yeah. And, you know, it just, with the right person in your corner, you can accomplish anything. I agree. And, and I think that, that having a mentor in life uh, is important. I, I've had a couple of great people. I've been very fortunate. And, you know, when you surround yourself with someone who can inspire you, uh, someone who uh, allows you to, to think out loud and helps you to be accountable for what you want in your life. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of mentors. You also talk about in your book about purpose. Now, that's one of my favorite subjects. So uh, I want to hear what your definition of purpose is. How do we find that? How do we make purpose work in our life? What I have found is that life purpose in particular mm. is when you've overcome a challenge and you have answers and can help other people do the same. It's really about how we can contribute to the greater good of the world and the greater good of society. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at purpose, right? And the other thing I look at when I talk about purpose is not just your avocation. It's how you live every day. Right. So for me, my goal is to inspire people to live a life of their dreams or to be their best self or to see possibilities. So I can do that as a parent. I can do that as a martial arts instructor, a life coach. doesn't matter mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I can always live that purpose. And so even if you were in a career that maybe wasn't something you absolutely want sure. to do, you could still find a way to live your purpose. Yeah. Carl, I I'm going to share a story with you and with our listeners. Uh, I've done so many interviews on television over the years, and I remember interviewing someone who was, a, I believe, a social scientist, pr perhaps out of Harvard, doesn't matter, but this person was really brilliant. And I remember this distinctly, and, and I asked her about life. I said, you know, how, how do we think about life? What, what is it that we have to understand and, and can help us to define ourselves? And I remember she said to me, you know, people think that there are three things in life that if they accomplish, they'll be very happy and satisfied. I said, okay, number one. She said, uh, people want more. They want more of whatever it happens to be. They want more money. They want more power, more fame, whatever it is. They just want more of it. And so they accomplish that. They get more. And they're still not happy. They're not satisfied. So then they go on to the second thing. Oh, I have more. Now I'm going to make it better. <laughs> I'm going to have a, you know, a better house, a better car, a better wife, better husband, whatever it happens to you. I'm going to make it all better. So they work at making it better. And they're still not satisfied. They go on to the third thing. Different. Now I'm going to set myself apart from everybody else. I'm going to be different. I'm going to have custom made. I'm going to be so unique that no one will be like me. So I'm going to be different. And she said, that's still not enough. I said, really? Yeah. She said, they go through more, better, and different. But she said, there's one thing that changes everything. And I said, okay, what's that? And she said, purpose. 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 Just like you said. If you have a purpose in your life, and it doesn't have to be some lofty thing. You don't necessarily have to be a big CEO of a company. Whatever it is that makes you feel that you have a sense of purpose in your life, that is really important, and it's the essence of what keeps you happy. That's right. That's really important, and, and, isn't it? And, and Yeah, absolutely. It's very yeah. important. And something that you keep uh, saying, repeating, is mm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. And thoughts is a part of, you know, what I'm talking about in the book as well. You know, sure. are your thoughts really serving you? You know, every day we have between, what, 2,500 to 3,000 thoughts per hour. Mm. That's something like, what, 80,000 yeah. thoughts per day, yeah. right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> How do we handle all of that? I don't know. <laughs> right. You know, and, and thoughts impact how we feel, and how we yeah. feel impacts how we behave. Sure. Right? Yeah. There's, that, there's that famous saying, you know, watch your thoughts, it becomes your your actions, mm -hmm. right? Your, no, excuse me. Watch your thoughts to become your words. Watch your words to become your actions. Watch right. your actions to become your, your character. Watch your character becomes your destiny. Mm, nice. Right? And so thoughts really have a powerful impact on our life, more than we realize. They do. And, and in your book, Carl, uh, mm -hmm. you talk about some other things, too, that are part of the, the six principles. And yeah. I had them written down. We talked about choice. Let's talk about choice and action. Mm -hmm. They go hand right. in hand. You make a decision, okay, and, and decisions determine destiny, as we say, right? So, mm -hmm. so talk about mm -hmm. choices and the actions that we need to take to make things happen. Choices are really important. And the, the reason I kind of laid out the book this way was because the mm -hmm. first part of it, truth, thoughts, purpose, 
are the inner victory we need to have to know what choices are really in, in alignment with what we want. Sure. You know, how do you make a choice if you don't know what your purpose is? How do you, you know, make an accurate mm. choice if your thoughts aren't in alignment with the things that you want in your life? Yes. And if you don't know your truth, how do you make the right choices? Mm-hmm. Right? Every choice you make will take you in a different direction. Right. I'm also a firm believer that, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And sometimes you have to take that step. And mm-hmm. You don't know where it's going to lead you. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. You don't need to know the whole thing right off the bat. But knowing that you can always make a different choice. Mm-hmm. is also important as well. Flexibility, right? Yeah, uh, you know, absolutely. being able to 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 adjust to situations. I think that's a very healthy thing to do. I mean, you know, sometimes we're very firm on certain values in our life, and I think that's good, but you have to have some flexibility to say, okay, that's changed. Uh, I'm redefining something. I've learned something new, and I'm going to react to it. Uh, let, me, let me talk about this, too, because I think that this is crucial, and it's part of, of what you're talking about in your book. And that is we have to be able to identify and to overcome, and here's the word, self-limiting beliefs, because yeah. a lot of people get stuck on that, okay? that They just are, are, are limiting themselves. How do we get over that, Carl? Go ahead. Well, it starts every single day, just really taking accounting for yourself. Hmm. And I'm going to give you three simple questions or four simple questions you can ask yourself, okay. right? Yep. The first question is, is what I'm thinking based on fact? Hmm. You know, sometimes we're thinking something and there's no facts to actually support what we're thinking. Mm, why do we do that? It's just something we sometimes do naturally. Mm. Uh, sometimes we have a false perspective of things, you know, the way we grew up, the way we yeah. see things, and we don't realize that we're actually even doing it. Okay. We call that a thinking trap. Okay. Right? Yeah. The second question is, is what I'm thinking making me feel the way I want to feel? Because remember what I said? Our yeah. thoughts impact our feelings and our behavior. Right. So is what I'm thinking making me feel the way that I want to feel? You first have to know how you want to feel. That's right. Right? That's right, yes. If it's making you feel bad, then it's probably not a good thought. Not right? a good thing, right. You have to change yeah. that. And then the last question I want you to think about is, is what I'm thinking helping me to reach my goal? Hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Is it taking me the other way or is it moving me forward? Mm-hmm. Is this thought really serving me? So when we're doing this, okay, this is a very good practice, Carl. When we're doing this, uh, this is where I think we need someone else to help us, to bounce things off. Because if we're alone and we're having these thoughts, uh, we need some some new food inside our brain, inside our mind to be able to say, hey, wait, 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 think about this. Think about that. Mm-hmm. So it can help mm-hmm. us to change. So you agree with that, you, that we need people to be able to bounce these things off, whether it's a mentor or whoever? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody needs an accountability partner. Somebody sure. they feel comfortable, that they can speak openly with, that they can be vulnerable with and get different uh, perspectives. And and not you can't really do that with everyone. Mm-hmm. So you have to find somebody that you're truly comfortable with, but I believe when you find the right person, they will move your life forward. I like that. They'll help you to move your life forward. Carl, I, I am holding uh, the book up right now. In fact, I'm, I'm putting it up in front of the camera. And uh, there's a big word right on that title, and it says unbreakable. That's a strong word when you say unbreakable. Let's talk about that because there are people who say, okay, I'm listening to you, and, and here's the reality of my life. I have what I think are insurmountable challenges. They're just very difficult for me. I have tried repeatedly, and, and, I, and I fail. I, I just can't make headway. So where is the roadmap? How do I get out of this feeling so that I can be, as you call in your book, unbreakable? Well, first of all, we all have the answers within us. Hmm. The, the truth is we all really know the desires and our hopes and our dreams and the things that we want. We're always going to be confronted with obstacles or things that seem insurmountable. You know, I'm a single full-time dad. I had these obstacles when, uh, you know, I was trying to win the world championships. Mm. You know, I've mm-hmm. had some really good friends pass sure. away, things mm. that are just devastating and, and, cha- and could change your life, right? Sure. When it comes to being unbreakable, it's about resiliency and about flexibility. Right. Sometimes we think in such a black and white way, we need sometimes to look at the gray areas of our life. Yes. And in those gray areas, we can make a different choice. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, there's no such thing as perfect. I, I tell everybody, you know, you, you should strive for excellence. Mm-hmm. The word excellence has the word excel in it. You know, mm-hmm. just go beyond wherever you are today. Just take one step forward. That's an accomplishment. Sure, sure. I mean, you, you might not be able to see the whole thing, but, uh-huh. you know, one step forward is one step better, right? I like that. You know, what you're talking about, Carl, um, I love quotations. And, mm-hmm. and there's one that I use often. Don't strive for success. Strive for significance. Nice. There's a big difference there. I mean, success, yeah. su- success can be okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, uh, hopefully, you know, you treat it properly and you don't abuse it. And you recognize that it is a gift. But mm-hmm. also understanding that beyond success is this thing called significance. Who are you? W- what do you represent? And, and we go back to the word purpose. What is your purpose in life? Are you doing something that really has significant value and you're passing something on and trying to make the world, I know this sounds like a beat up expression, but trying to make the world a better place, Carl. That's right. Right? And when you're the best version of yourself, that's yeah. what you do. You're, you become a happy contributing member of society. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, let, me, let, let me ask you this too, because uh, I, I try to ask a lot of questions having done this over the years, that people would like to ask. People who are listening to us and saying, hey, hey, Ernie, ask that question. Okay, we talked about insurmountable situations. Now let me ask you about this, crossroads. Okay, in life, there are times when we come to not just once or twice, maybe often, crossroads, Mm -hmm. trying to make the right choice and the right decision when we feel that maybe we could go either way with this. You know, it's not like a, a clear-cut decision. It's not like, no, no, I know what to do. This is wrong, and this is right. But you're at a crossroad, and you're saying, okay, now, how do I, how do I really feel this thing out and make the right choice? Talk about that. Yeah. You know, so many times in life we're going to be at a crossroad. Mm. And there's some choices that we have to ask ourselves, are okay. we making them because they're most convenient? Mm -hmm. and they have the least amount of challenge, Mm -hmm. are we making the choice that's truly in alignment with who and where we want to be in our life? Sure. And that means sometimes we have to face the dragon and, you know, overcome some of those challenges that we're facing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. And the minute you can accept that, you know, it changes everything. Yes, Yes. Right? In, the, in the martial arts, we talk about that a a lot. You know, Mm -hmm. when is somebody most dangerous when they surrender? Hmm because they have nothing to lose at that point, right? Mm-hmm. They're just going to go for it. They're mm-hmm. going to really give it 110%, and sometimes we need to surrender to the fact like that it. things are going to be difficult. Yeah, It doesn't make it impossible. That's a good point. Uh, Carl, uh, as a parent, I can tell you that one of the best things that we can give our children mm-hmm. is a good sense of self-esteem, mm-hmm. uh, giving them confidence and making them feel good about themselves. Because I, I feel that if you give them that, it's like armor. And it, it can yeah. protect them against a lot of things that will happen in life. It's inevitable. We're going to have difficulties and challenges and problems. Mm-hmm. But if you have a, a sense of self-esteem that you feel good about yourself and you have that confidence, I think that's an amazing weapon. And it can help you survive whatever it happens to be. I, I think you agree with that, don't you? Yeah. I totally agree with that. Uh, and one of the things I'm... Um really fond of telling my son is, you know, one, you never fail until you stop trying. Mm. And number two is make as many mistakes as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You only learn from making mistakes, you know, and so many times I, I have experiences working with adults and they're afraid to make mistakes because they were told that making a mistake is wrong. No, making a mistake allows you to learn. Exactly. Allows you to grow, allows you to improve. So make mistakes and then move forward from there. Well, make a better choice next time. Listen, that's why there's an eraser and a pencil, right? <laughs> they, they, they still make <laughs> <Right>. pencils. <laughs> but Even it's ink tr- isn't permanent, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, <erasable> <laughs> I mean, it's a good visual. It's like, okay, you're going to make a mistake, but you know what? Look at it as a learning experience. Yeah. Don't think of it as a failure. And that's, mm-hmm. that's part of the problem, you know? Uh, and, and when we're very young, even in school, uh, I, I love teachers. I love them. And, and, and they, they all you know, work so hard at what they do, and there are some that are just outstanding. But I think that there's a responsibility at home and in the schools and wherever you know, someone is going to learn to be able to help our, our young people learn that you know, you're going to grow from this. 
Uh, and it's okay. It's okay if you do it this way because maybe it's your unique style. Uh, many right. times when, when a child is in school and they're drawing something and the teacher might say, well, you know what, Tr- try to make it you know, inside those little circles. I understand what they're doing, and that's helpful to a certain extent, but it's nice to allow that child to go a little outside that circle and maybe yes. discover something else about uh, themselves or about you know, the, an art or, or life. I think that's very yeah. healthy, very healthy. You know, you know. What, again, in my martial arts school, I I, uh, I share this with my instructors. I say, you know, we don't teach martial arts; hmm. we teach people. Hmm. And we have to remember that, and each person is unique, and what works for one may not work for another. Yes. And so we have to find ways to help them to succeed in life. You know, I was interviewing. I remember that. Yes, sir. I was interviewing Tony Danza not too long ago. Mm-hmm. What a, an amazing guy he is! You know, yeah. Brooklyn-born, terrific actor, right. great personality. Ten years ago, he started a, a terrific program, and it's Stars of Tomorrow, and he helps a lot of young people to learn, you know, the art of performing. And and his line, he says, when you teach a kid to act, they learn how to act. Mm-hmm. And I said, this is great because it's more than just just the art of teaching someone how to perform it's learning how to how to live their life and how to act in life and how to be themselves i I love that stuff uh this is all good you know one thing you know that that i I will leave you with and that is i believe in complimenting yourself every day uh that may sound to some people being narcissistic Mm -hmm. but you know what compliment Mm -hmm. yourself pat yourself on the back because you know positivity can really change your outlook and, and we should be proud of ourselves because many times we put ourselves down. And, and I love working with young people. I've written two books for teenagers and, and young children. And, and I think that that's so important to be able to be proud of yourself, to be happy with yourself, mm-hmm. and to recognize the good qualities that you have and to improve on that and realize that you've been given gifts and you have to use them. You have to use your gifts. Absolutely. And it's the recognition of what's good in us, right? Mm. Uh, really thinking about that, you know, the, the word pride, you know, people can say, oh, you're being arrogant at this. No, it's the recognition of the good. It's the pleat in my pants. It's how I stand. It's how I carry myself. It's how I interact with others. And asking yourself, you know, at the end of the day, hey, mm. you know, what did I do right today? Yeah. What went well? You know, <laughs> there you go. Your whole perspective, you know, and having a sense of gratitude, too, for the opportunities that came your way, you know? I love it. You know, you're a number one Amazon bestseller for a good reason, uh, Carl, because we listened to you, you today. And, I mean, if anybody has, has been listening to the program, they're going to go out and get this book immediately. It's called Unbreakable, Six Principles to Reset Your Life and Become Unbreakable. And, and Carl Romain, uh, a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for sharing and trying to make things better for everybody in life, including ourselves. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, okay? Thank you. Come back sometime. We'd love to have you on again. Yes. And we to. certainly hope that people have uh, learned something from our program today. Uh, I'm going to see you next time. And this is Positively Extra. It's our podcast. I hope you're listening to it. You can catch me every day, of course, on 77 WABC Radio with more positive news you can use. So we're wishing you all good things. And like the song goes in the background, remember, you were born to be alive. Have a good one. <laughs>